So if the average weather-related major event becomes more destructive, the one nation most impacted is the Philippines. Marso ngayong taon, bumisita si former U.S. Vice President Al Gore sa Pilipinas upang pangunahan ang Climate Reality Leadership Core Training na sa unang pagkakataon ay isinagawa sa ating bansa. Nagsama-sama ang delegates mula sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo upang pag-usapan at planuhin ang pagpapalakas ng puwersa laban sa climate change. Yes, the Climate Reality Project was founded by former Vice President Al Gore and Nobel Laureate Al Gore We really work to try and build public support around the world for addressing climate change. We have branch offices in nine key countries around the world, including the Philippines. And in all those branch offices, we'll be working now to make sure that the Paris Agreement on Climate Change is implemented in those countries and the commitments countries made to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions are eventually strengthened as the agreement provides. We, we do three-day trainings for people to, to turn, turn them into what we call climate reality leaders. Um, we chose the Philippines because the Philippines is a very important, well-respected country around the world. Um, it's a leader in the developing world in addressing climate change and on a lot of other issues. And it is, of course, at the center of the climate change problem. You've suffered terrible tragedies here from storms and from rising sea levels, and you're very vulnerable to that. And so we think it's uh, a country that uh, um, can play a very strong leadership role in this and that it has You know, the political role to do so. Ilang araw bago ang training sa Maynila, hindi pinalagpas ni Mr. Gore ang pagkakataong kamustahin ang Yolanda survivor sa Tacloban. Uh, he was very impressed with the resilience of the Filipinos, the resilience of the human spirit, the generosity, at the same time uh, how Tacloban has been able to get back on its feet while there's still much to be done. Sa unang araw ng training, ipinaliwanag ni Mr. Gore ang dahilan sa likod ng paglakas ng Bagyong Yolanda na tumama sa Pilipinas noong 2013 na tinaguri ang isa sa strongest typhoons in the world noong taong iyon. But here's what I want you to focus on. Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan as most of the world uh, names it crossed areas of the Pacific More than three degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Paliwanag ni Mr. Gore, ang lakas ng isang bagyo ay naiimpluwensyahan ng moisture at init mula sa karagatan. Ang mas mainit na karagatan ay maaaring bumuo ng mas malalakas na bagyo. Ang labi sa pag-init ng karagatan, isang epekto naman ng pagdami ng greenhouse gases dala ng mga gawain ng tao. The principal part of the problem is here. We still rely on dirty carbon-based fuels for 85% of all of the energy used in the global economy. But you can see after World War II, the amounts began to increase dramatically. And now look, the extreme hot days are now more numerous than the cooler than average days. In fact, they are almost 150 times more common than they were just 30 years ago. 14 of the 15 hottest years ever measured with instruments have occurred uh, since the year 2000. Bukod sa malakas na bagyo at iba pang extreme weather events, iniuugnay na rin ang climate change sa pagkalat ng iba't ibang sakit gaya ng dengue, chikungunya at Zika virus. Bagamat marami pa ring pagsubok pagdating sa climate change, masaya namang ibinahagi ni Mr. Gore kung gaano nakalayo ang ating narating sa layuning mapalawak ang paggamit ng clean energy. We beat that goal by 17 times over. Last year, we beat that goal by 58 times over. But wait, this year, We are on track to beat that goal 68 times over. 
Ayon kay Mr. Gore, may tiwala siya sa Pilipinas dahil mayaman tayo sa renewable energy sources na unti-unti na rin tinatangkilik ng marami. Ngunit kailangan pa rin ng strong political will para maipagpatuloy ang layuning mapigilan ang masamang epekto ng climate change. Kaya naman may hamon si Senator Loren Legarda sa mga presidential candidate ngayong nalalapit na eleksyon. You can ask them, uh, what's your agenda for climate change? Uh, even if we are non-emitter in the world of 0.3%, uh, how do you think we as a vulnerable nation can move forward through climate mitigation and adaptation? Let's see what they have to say. Unti-unti, pero sama-sama, lahat ay ating makakaya. We're going to win this. We are going to prevail. We have everything we need. Some still doubt that we have the will to act. But I say, the will to act is itself a renewable resource.